Hey, what's going on everybody? This episode, we're gonna talk more about the hash code method and specifically how to override this method in our custom classes. So considering we have a pretty much blank application here, we'll probably have to make some classes. So let's go over into our package explorer, right click new class, and we're just gonna call it person and we don't need public static main and hit finish. And this person is going to have, let's just go with like very simple here. All right, we're just gonna go with an email, string email, like so. And then inside of collections, all we would say is person P is a new person. Okay, so then what we can do is we can set an email for this person. Like so. So that is how we would set that field. Alternatively, we can create a constructor. So in that situation, we would just say person, and this is going to take string email, and then we would assign it to this dot email is equal to email. So that just might make our calling our calling code a little bit cleaner. So in our calling code, we can just pass in email at email.com and get rid of this line altogether. All right, great. Now what I wanna do is let's just assume that this email is the number one unique thing there is. So you can only have like one email, you know, if we're creating a website or something, each account would, would have a unique email. So this person has this email and then let's say we have another person, Q, and we'll call, this person's email. My gosh, I can't think of any emails. Other at email.com. All right, so the question is, is P and Q the same? Well, no, in no way are they the same. And you can see this by doing P equal equal Q, running this, and we get false. Alternatively, you could do P dot equals and pass in Q, like so. Running this, and we still get false. No matter what, it's just not equal. I mean, there's there's no way around it. Even if these things have the same exact email, when we run this, we're still going to get false. And that's because this equals method, although this is the proper way to compare these, we haven't defined how this equals method works. And when we change this equals method, if we wanna override it, we also have to change the hash code method. So let's go into person, and what we're gonna do is we're going to say, oh, there's probably gotta be a good way to override it, generating something, let's see. Aha, I found it. So you right click, hover over source, and then generate hash code and equals. Uh, what is all this? Uh, we'll just hit generate and just ignore this for a minute, or not this one, ignore the hash code for a moment and let's focus on this equals method. So if you wanted to do an equals method very simply, first you got all these like case check it, checks, like make sure that it's make sure the equals is not the same object, then it's gonna be true, make sure it's not null, then it's gonna be false, and so forth. But if we just wanted to focus on the absolute thing to compare here is if the email equals the other person's email. So it looks like it generated that code for us and all the other cases for nulls and make sure the type and all that is all good to go. So this should be a really good equals method just like that. So let's go over to the collection and let's run this now and check this out. It's true, what? That's crazy. All right, so now let's take a look at the hash code for this thing. So p.hashcode and we get this negative two zero something something something. And what I want to do is I want to run the other hash code as well. So we'll say p.hashcode and q.hashcode. And we run this and you can see we get the same value. So great, hash code is working as well. So I would say that's probably the easiest way to create the <laughs> equals and hash code method is just generate it for yourself and then you don't have to worry about it. However, it is ideal to understand a little bit about this hash code method because like what is going on here? We got these random numbers. 
not random. I mean, it's a prime number. And then we have some kind of like calculation thing here. And pretty much there is a way to make the hash codes have a, a wide variety of numbers so that we don't get repetitive hash codes for different objects. And it usually deals with the prime and then some calculation from the prime using the, the field. And, and it, it seems to work. So if you had more complicated fields, it, it would probably do the trick just fine. Now another common thing you're going to see is instead of having this calculation in here manually like so, what you'll often see is just objects dot hash and then the fields passed in. So we would pass in the person's email. And then what we would have to do is we'd actually have to return whatever this, this returns. So return. So let's see if this works. Running this, you can see we still get the same exact value. So that is a more pretty way of doing it. And let's explain how this works. So when you call objects.hash, what it does is it takes this field, whatever field you pass in, email in this case, and it hashes it. And it takes that hash plus any of the other fields that you pass in here, and it hashes those together. If we have multiple fields, this can be an easy way to, to make things really simple. So let's say not only do you have to have the same email, but let's say you have to have the same, I don't know, last name, sure, why not? And we'll take this in the constructor. There we go, that's how you would do that there. And the calling code, we need to update that and pass in some last names here. We'll have two curries here. Spicy. All right, and we'll probably need to update this equals method. So hmm, where do, what do I what do I want to change here? Guess I'd copy these lines here. And instead of email, we'll just have it last name. Last name last name and last name. There we go. So let's see first to make sure that the the equals works. So if p dot equals and we'll pass in q. Commenting out this line for a moment. Let's make sure this works first. All right, it's true. Seems to be working. The the email and the last name are the same. Let's just change one of these. Realize it's false and then let's try changing one of the last names. and it's false. So it appears that everything is working the way we expect. Now let's try the hash code. So we'll say p dot hash code and q dot hash code. Running this, what are we getting? We're still getting the same numbers here. Um, but the problem is we did not update Actually, yeah, we did not update this hash code method here, so it's only working with the email. So check this out. If I go in here, I change this last name here, and I run this, look at this. The output is exactly the same. That's because it's only looking at the email. Now it is okay for, on occasion, two different objects to have the same hash code. However, in this situation, we obviously intended for the last name to be a part of it. Um, but just so we're clear, based off what we talked about in the, the previous episode, if you have an object and you say o dot hash code, one of the, the bullet points in here is that it is not required that if two objects are unequal according to the equals method, then calling the hash code method on each of the two objects must produce distinct integer results. In other words, it's okay for them to have the same integer result However, you may want to pull in the last name as part of that, and in that situation, you just add it as another argument in this objects.hash, so you would just say last name, and that should work. Running this now, we get the same numbers here, and let's uh, change one of these last names, make sure that we get different numbers. So we run this and check it out, the numbers are different, so it seems that the last name is now contributing to the hash code method, and that's a little bit about how that works.
So now I just want to explore a little bit about when you have an object as a field inside of another object. So in other words, if in this class, instead of having this as a string, we had it as like an object type here. Let's see how that works. And we're going to actually create a new object. So we'll say new class or a new class, sorry. And we're going to call this position. So basically pretend everybody is on a map. Everybody's given a position for like a, I don't know, a video game or, or whatever, or GPS, it doesn't really matter. And in here, we're gonna have int x and int y. And I'm also going to create a position constructor, just to make things nice and pretty. Set some values here, spell it right, that's always helpful, and there we go. So now what I wanna do is inside of the person class, I want to take this person's position and we'll just call that position. So now in order for the things to be equal, the positions have to be the same. So let's take a look down here in the equals method. We're going to extend this a little bit. Paste another section here. Switch some code up here. And this part you need to watch out for. So we're saying position dot equals and then passing in the other position, which means the same thing happens again. We have to go down the chain because in order to use that equals method appropriately, we have to override it inside a position. So we would go in here and we would say, heck, why don't we just generate it? Come on, man. There we go. Click that generate. And beautiful, there we go. So now we should be able to just have it position dot equals the other position. And then inside the hash code, we would just put a comma here and say position. So let's just run this and <laughs> before we just assume it works, let's just run this and see how it works. And we need to also contribute some positions here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say position pose one and we'll just say new position and pass in 1010. And then p dot position, just assign that the value pose one. All right, so that's the first person. Then we're gonna do that again. So position pose two is the new position, same spot, 1010. And then q dot position is assign the value pose two. So make sure you're assigning to the right person here so we don't override overwrite the old one. So I think that looks good. Uh, let's just see if these are equal first. So p dot hash code, we'll say p dot equals instead and pass in q. Running this, we are getting false. And probably because I forgot to change the name back. So let's put that back to how it was, run this, and we see true. So it seems like the equals might be working and let's just pass in a different position to make sure that's contributing to this to make sure this is now false. And it looks like it's comparing everything by values rather than by the memory addresses of the objects, which is great. So now what I wanna do is I want to do the hash code and I deleted that other line, but I probably should have kept that. Change this 100 to a 10 and hit run on this and it looks like we get the same exact values. Great. So the point I wanted to make here is that when we have nested objects, so an object containing an object, person P contains the object pose one, in that situation, it's just going to go down the chain. So inside of the person class, this hash will just call the hash code method of position, which will then go into this position class and execute this right here, which will do things appropriately using the, the values of the object rather than the memory address, so it's good. If we did not override these things, we might have issues because possibly it could be that the hash code being used would be based off of the memory address rather than the value and even though we're using the same numbers here, they would be different positions and that would cause an issue. Maybe we could just go through an example and, and see that in action and see what happens. So we'll delete this and uh, 
I don't know what to put here. Heck, let's just get rid of all this. There we go. Inside a person. It's now going to use the memory addresses of the, the person because that's the default for equals. If you don't have something there, it's just going to use the equals operator, which is two equal signs, and that's going to use the memory address. And same thing here for this hash code. It's just going to use the default hash code, which is derived from the memory address. So let's see what happens in our code. First, let's take a look at the equals. So I'll comment this out and p dot equals q. You can see it's false. And then we have p dot hash code and q dot hash code. Running this now, you see we get completely two different values. In order for these to be the same values, you would have to use the same position object. So we would have to say q.position is position one, and I think this would be the same value now, and indeed it is. So that is that. Yes, it's quite a lot. Honestly, this, this, <laughs> this whole hash code thing took me a really long time to wrap my brain around in all of the different aspects of it. So now I really feel like We've covered the essentials and we're ready to move on to the next topic, which I think is going to be sets. So stay tuned for that and I will see you then. And hopefully I uh, don't change my mind on what I want to talk about, but we'll see. Thanks.